Oh, hey there, you fancy little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl, and welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hi there, y'all. Hope y'all are having a fantastic day. I want to take a quick second and give you a big old apology for how I acted last week. You see, I was so distracted by my new fame, it kind of got me in a weird headspace. But I'm better now because I realize that God has done so much for me. I now know that I can do so much by giving God what I have. So, now that that's out of the way, I have some big news. I released another dancing video. And guess what? It has millions of views! Haha, <laughs> tell you what, I got some moves. Check it out. I mean, what can I say? I'm a natural. Well, anyways, I wanted to say that so I can tell you all this. Today I want to do a special ritual, which I usually do by myself. And no, it's not my eyebrow waxing routine. Nope, today I'm going to be reading all the wonderful comments that I've received under my new video. There's a famous saying in the industry, I always read the comments. They say the richest forms of flattery lie in the comments of the people that watch your stuff. So I held off on reading all of them so I could read them in front of y'all. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You're gonna find out that too many people love me too much? <laughs> I'll take my chances. Y'all ready for this? This dancing is the greatest I've seen ever. Well, thank you, Campbell Soup 35 If I had to watch one more video for the rest of my life, I'd choose this video. Wow, that is so sweet, Booger95000. Let's continue. If I had to choose whether to watch this video again or eat a bag of worms, <laughs> I'd eat four bags of worms. Well, that right there hurt my feelings. But that's okay, because you can't make everyone happy. <laughs> I'm sure that's the only one that's negative, so let's take a look. Thank you so much for this video. You see, here's someone that really appreciates good content. Let's see what else they had to say. Thank you so much for this video, because now I can congratulate you for being the worst dancer ever. Okay. Okay, don't cry, Carl. <laughs> don't cry. Ooh. <laughs> Please don't cry. Hold it together. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm going to have to let you go for a bit. I'm gonna go calm down and try not to cry anymore. <laughs> Definitely not gonna cry. <laughs> Alrighty then, that's pretty rough. Um, but I think Carl's gonna be okay because there's certainly a lesson that Carl needs to learn, but we're also gonna learn that through today's story. And this story takes place in 1 Kings chapter 10 in the Old Testament. Now Solomon is still the king and he's doing great. And quickly rumors about how rich and wealthy and powerful and wise King Solomon really is begin to spread all over the land. You see, that's what happens when you become famous like Solomon. People begin to talk about you and say things about you. Some of it's true and some of it, not so much. Unfortunately, some people like just to make things up, sad and mean things, especially if they do not like that person. So as the rumors had spread, there was a queen who had heard all the stories about Solomon. Her name was Queen Sheba and she was gonna to travel to go see Solomon to see how truly powerful and wise and rich he really was. She was also curious about Solomon's great relationship with God as well. And that is why the queen got all of her people together and headed off to Jerusalem, Solomon's home. She wanted to test Solomon and show everybody who he truly was. With her, she had brought tons of camels and spices and gold, and she was gonna lay it all out before Solomon. But she had no idea what she was walking into. When she got to Jerusalem, she was blown away by everything. Now, when crazy big rumors about famous people are made, they usually aren't true. Now, famous people aren't usually who they seem, but with Solomon, that wasn't the case. Queen Sheba had heard that Solomon had great wisdom and wealth and riches, but this was bigger than she had ever imagined. There was more gold than she expected. There was food on every table. The servants and the officials were in robes. She was blown away. And she was incredibly impressed with the temple that Solomon had built for God. I mean, she could not believe her eyes. Then she went to test Solomon with questions. Now she probably wanted Solomon to slip up or to fail as that way he could prove to everybody that Solomon is not as great as a king as everyone has made him out to be. But guess what? Solomon had passed the test. He answered every question with no problem at all. Queen Sheba was so impressed she could not believe that every rumor she had heard about was actually true. God had truly blessed Solomon and she realized how happy all of the people of Israel must truly be to have King Solomon as their leader. 
Now, even though the queen and Solomon were friends and there were so many people that adored Solomon, that doesn't mean there were still not people out there that didn't like him. Even Solomon knew that no matter how much he did, no matter how many people he pleased or how many questions he answered, there would always be people out there that didn't like him. Unfortunately, it's the same here for you and me. In life, some people will love us and like us and some will not. Sometimes it's because of a specific reason, but other times it's for no reason at all. And that could be tough because I don't know about you, but I would love if everyone liked me, but it's not possible. But you know what helps me is knowing that there is someone out there that is always on my side and is going to love me no matter what. And do you know who that is? Nope, it is not Superman, it is not Iron Man, and it's not even my grandma. It's God. God will always love us. And when we realize that, it makes having other people not liking us a little bit easier. And if that doesn't make you feel better, always think about Jesus. Jesus was the nicest and most loving person that has ever walked on this planet. And there was a lot of people who didn't like him. So as long as we are loving God, giving God what we have, and loving other peoples, that's all that matters. When you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Did you hear that, Carl? Huh? I said, when you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Whoa, wait, is that true? Of course it is, and it's especially true for you. Those comments will hurt your feelings, but you cannot forget that God's opinion of you is the only opinion that matters. Wow, that's such good news, and that really makes me feel better. Wait a minute, you just said our big idea. Today's big idea is when you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. So let's shout it out on the count of three. One, two, three. When you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Woo now while y'all are listening to the story, I discovered that the saying, you should always read the comments, doesn't exist. It's never read the comments. And if you do, just make sure to bring a buddy with you so you can remember your big idea. When you're loved by God, you don't need to be liked by everyone. Just because someone doesn't like you doesn't mean that God doesn't love you forever and also give you everything you need along the way. To be honest, I don't know if this whole being famous thing is for me. Plus, fancy people eat snails, and that's disgusting. I don't want to eat snails. I'm fine with my normal chicken nuggets. So I'll leave the being famous to the other celebrities. And on that note, I'm going to make like a tree and a leaf. Get it? Because I said like a tree and uh, I said leaf instead of leaf. It's, it's a pun. I don't know if you guys know about what a pun is, but you will learn like today, like right now. <laughs> okay, see you kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of...